Good morning and Merry Christmas. We are so happy that you have joined St. Mark's United Methodist Church in San Diego for this first Christmas Sunday morning. Praising God for the dedication of the staff and the volunteers who have worked through our Advent season, taping numerous um, worship opportunities for you, we have given them some time away. So I am in this beautiful sanctuary by myself today and will be preaching in this same space by myself. But that doesn't mean that I am alone. I am with God as well as you are. And together we have come to worship God in this space wherever you are. Amanda, our youth and young people's director, will be hosting a Zoomed family fun event today at 11 a.m. There will be an opportunity for families to come together and share their Christmas stories of this past few days, as well as watching Olaf's Frozen Adventure. I hope that you'll take an opportunity to see that. And just as a reminder, the church offices will be closed this um, week through January 3rd, resuming its normal, abnormal, <laughs> routines beginning um, at 9 a.m. on the 4th of January. But rest assured, all emails and voicemails will be responded to during this break. So if you need the church office for anything, please reach out to us. We are here for you. Wherever you are today, I hope that you feel the Spirit of God engage you in new ways as we come together celebrating God's great love here and where you are. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Eternal God, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Good morning and welcome to children's time. Have any of you had to wait a very long time for something? How long did you have to wait? 
a few hours, a day, a week, a month, even a whole year? What do you think it would feel like to wait your whole life for something? Simon was a man who lived a long time ago in Jerusalem and he waited his whole life, 80 or 90 years, for something very special to happen. He was waiting to meet someone very important. Simon was waiting to meet Jesus. God let Simon know that before he died, he would get to see Jesus face to face. Simon waited his whole life to meet Jesus, and when he was an old, old man, it happened. When Jesus was just a baby, Mary and Joseph brought him into the temple in Jerusalem. They wanted to thank God for sending them this very special son. On that same day that they were in the temple, Simon felt that God told him to go quickly to the temple. Simon knew that when he arrived at the temple, something very special was going to happen. He was very excited. In fact, he was more excited than you were on Christmas Eve. Remember how hard it was to go to sleep that night because you were so excited? Simon waited his whole life to meet Jesus. He listened to God and he knew when it was time to go to the temple and meet Jesus. We've created the nativity scene with animals and shepherds, Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus in the manger. Now that Jesus has come, we need to listen to God just like Simon. This week, we will add Simon to the scene, but he doesn't go in the nativity. <coughs> Let's place him outside the shoebox, waiting to meet Jesus. This will remind us that Simon waited to meet Jesus and spent his time waiting by going to the temple. When we are excited, sometimes it's hard to listen. The days after Christmas are filled with excitement as we play with our new toys or play a new video game that we received. But I want everyone to remember how important it is to listen to God and spend some time this week listening to God just like Simon did. Amen. Send you a happy new year And God send
first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. His, he fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning with verse 22. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after their marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God of all life, we praise you for the gift of your love, which illuminates our world, even what seems like dark times. We praise you for the angels here among us who speak and sing your praises in hushed and thunderous ways. We praise you for the rushing and calm waters which are teeming with your creatures, we praise you for the fields and the mountains of crops that bear your seeds. 
We praise you for the young and the old which share your truth in all languages and traditions. God of all life, we praise you for all you have been, are today, and will be in generations to come. Amen. Having a toddler growing up in our home, which began as a very, very weak infant, it has reminded me how much attention a small child requires. They demand your complete adherence to their needs. Feeding, changing, soothing, and starting all over again. Many of you may remember those long nights and days, and some of you are experiencing them now. And some of you may be pondering how maybe having a child in a few years might disrupt what seems to be your simple life. Blessings to each of you as you remember, as you engage, and as you ponder these things in your heart. Our passage today talks about Jesus as the infant child, but maybe a little context might be needed. According to the law of Moses, as written in Leviticus 12, Mary and Joseph had to wait 33 days before they could present Jesus to the temple for his dedication to the Lord, being the firstborn of Mary's life. And so they waited, but had she had a girl, it would have been 66 days. The need for her to present herself was for her purification. It is required by the law of Moses that a mother bring a priest, a lamb in its first year, or for the burnt offering, and a pigeon or a turtle dove for the sin atonement offering for her menstruational flow, which then would bring her back into a community of faith. However, if she cannot afford the sheep, she shall take two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for the burnt offering and one for her sin atonement offering. So Mary and Joseph arrive at the temple within the first 40 days of Jesus's life to dedicate him to fulfill the law. As a couple, and then as a new family, they have traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem to Bethlehem and back to Jerusalem, roughly 100 miles in less than a month and a half. Remembering the circumstances surrounding Jesus's birth, Having a newborn child in such barren estate and in poverty is one thing. To do it in first century Palestine when there is no easy modes of transportation and probably no hotels to stay in as they have traveled, mm, I can't even imagine. Yet, Mary and Joseph make these journeys to fulfill their faithfulness to the law and also to remain obedient to Rome's mandates. Not fulfilling the law, as I said, would preclude Mary from being reconnected to her faith community after Jesus' birth. And so they go. Mary takes two pigeons, and two, or two turtle doves to the priest. Imagine being exhausted and physically distanced from your family and your community, and then having to publicly display your poverty. This was the beginning of Mary and Joseph's life as new parents. God, favored Mary with the Annunciation, and then she has to give a sin offering for the birth of her child. And Jesus, being the firstborn, must be dedicated to God, God with us. 
Thankfully, at this point, enter Simeon and Anna, strangers who see the exhausted, impoverished couple and after fulfilling the law. They don't see, however, the poverty of this couple. They don't see Mary and Joseph's exhaustion. Instead, what Anna and Simeon see is God incarnate. The elder and the prophet embrace the family, recognizing their faithfulness and the truth they hold in their arms. Both Anna and Simeon offer their praise to God because the Spirit of God has led them both to see the salvation and redemption of the people of Israel as they had been assured. Simeon and Anna don't just see God's fulfillment, but each of them publicly bless the Holy Family and speak truth to Mary and Joseph. As they have been told, her son will be called great and the son of the Most High and save the people from their sins. Simeon and Anna, hopeful watchers of God's revelation, are more than just bystanders. Anna has been listed as one of the women prophets in the Bible, of which there are few. Five have been named specifically, one unnamed. But here, Anna, listed as a prophet, preaches to both the men and the women who are in the temple, who will hear what she has found in this infant child. And Simeon, having the Holy Spirit rest upon him as a prophet, again, enunciates to Mary the joy of the baby she carries. Perhaps the private words that Mary and Joseph hear from these two strangers declaring her enunciation do give her reason to pause and ponder what is in her heart. It isn't about who Jesus is, but it's the understanding that they, Mary and Joseph, are not alone in understanding their revelation from God's angel. Perhaps the amazement comes because Simeon is sharing even more than what the angel had told Mary at the Annunciation. Remembering that Gabriel told Mary, he, the child you will bear, will be great and be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Those are words of truth. And these are not just the words that Mary is hearing. Simeon, now, as Paul Harvey says, is telling the rest of this story. As he says, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. These words might be the reason that Mary and Joseph stand in amazement and perhaps concern. My cousin Carlisle, many of you have been praying for her. She is blogging her way through her breast cancer. Carlisle is a tough woman, but she's also young. She's a mom of two children, 11 and 8. Carlisle is only 48 years old. And as a teenager, Carlisle always had a sense of strength. She held a family secret to protect those that she loves. She can operate earth-moving construction equipment with the best of them. And she has suffered great loss, both financially and to her reputation. And now this wound of cancer goes deep into her heart. And it's only through chemo and the additional treatments that she endures 
that she knows how deep that wound is. The other day in her blog, she recounted a story from 2008, and I have her permission to share this with you. She shares the story of when her husband Justin and she were digging footings for the new Walgreen Pharmacy in London, Kentucky. She describes the day as being wet and a rainy Saturday in April when she was in the footer shoveling wet dirt into the bucket of the excavator that her husband Justin was using. Exhausted and perhaps a bit dirty, they decided to stop and have Mexican food after a day of work. And the wait staff that had seen them working with this construction in the rain complimented them on a job well done. But these are the words that she spoke, which I am sharing with you now. Back then, I had no idea we would have even one child, much less two. Back then, I had no idea my dad would get Alzheimer's disease. Back then, I had no idea I would develop breast cancer. Luckily, God doesn't tell me his plans for me. I wouldn't have appreciated how much I love and adore my two kids. I wouldn't have believed that I would have a daughter and a son as smart and as beautiful and funny as they are. I couldn't have dreamed that one day my dad would turn meek and mild. I could not have imagined one day my dad would not know my name. I could not have dreamed of the day the radiologist would be finishing up her biopsies and tell me of my cancer. God does not tell us what's coming down our pathway. God only invites us to participate in this thing called life with as much faith as we can muster. And sometimes it might not seem like much, but God accepts all of our offerings of faith, no matter how meager they may seem to us. Mary and Joseph had no idea of what they would encounter in the days ahead of them as they faithfully raised Jesus in the law of Moses under Roman rule. They had no idea they would soon be fleeing for their lives to avoid the executioners who would pursue their son. They had no idea that a young Jesus would abandon them after Passover so he could spend time in his father's house with the temple elders. They had no idea the cost of being in ministry would be. Mary and Joseph had no idea of what their faithfulness to God would cost them. But then, neither do we. We, like Mary and Joseph, are invited to participate with faith in this thing called life. We are invited to bring our faith and our hope to the throne of God, just like they did, sometimes feeling tired and empty-handed. We, like Anna and Simeon, are invited to continue looking for where God is now and how God is working in the lives around us. We don't know where we might encounter Jesus, but we do know that God is here because our faith tells us so. We just need to keep our eyes open for God's revelation. It is said that the eyes are the window to the soul, and here Simeon and Anna find the heart of God in the eyes of this very tiny baby. Simeon acknowledges that his eyes have seen God's salvation. And Anna the prophet, the moment she sees Jesus, begins praising God and tells everyone looking for the redemption of Ju Jerusalem to look no more. I can only imagine how Joseph and Mary felt after hearing what they'd been told by the angel and then confirmed and enhanced upon by these two strangers. This child, their child, was God incarnate, God's revelation of love, justice, and mercy 
in the world. Simeon and Anna had waited a lifetime for their moment of encounter. Well into their advanced years, they continued to trust God. They didn't know how long it would take for them to see God's perfect peace, but their faith day by day brought them to the moment when they proclaimed, praise the Lord for we have seen your salvation. It has been a difficult year for so many people in the world. This pandemic has brought many challenges we never could have imagined, but it has also brought great joy. Babies have been born. Healings have occurred. The sun continues to rise and to set, and there was an astronomical event that hasn't occurred in centuries and won't again for centuries to come. I hope you had a chance to see what God is doing as we have adhered to the mandates that have been set around us. As we journey through the days ahead, I hope you'll continue to look for where God is revealing God's self to us. I know I plan to take time to look maybe a little more deeply into the eyes of the people around me because those people belong to the image of God. These may be strangers' eyes. They may be someone with whom we have known those eyes for decades. And they may even be the eyes of a small child. No matter how young or how old the eyes are that we look into, our eyes and their eyes will change each day with each experience, with each hope, and with each prayer as we encounter life. By looking into one another's eyes, we too will behold the image of God looking back into our eyes, then too, I pray, we will praise God for the gift of life we behold. Amen. Let us pray. God of promise, we give you thanks for these days of celebration and joy, remembering your greatest gift to us through the presence and love of your son, Jesus. Through him, you continue to meet us in our vulnerability with your blessings of healing and grace. In these days of the Christmas season, fill us, O comforter, with the peace of your presence with us. Even on this day, when we celebrate your light, we are aware of the darkness of our unfaithfulness that brings chaos and disorder to our world. We pray the light of your love would break open the violence of tribalism and dehumanization, that it would scatter the insecurities that drive the hoarding of wealth and power, that it would unclench the fears that fortify walls between us and our neighbors and soften the hardened hearts grown calloused by envy and greed. Illumine the isms that reside within each of us and open our eyes to see the wounds we may have knowingly or unknowingly inflicted upon our human siblings. 
give us courage to confess these sins and to trust in your power to reconcile and to redeem. As we anticipate a new year, we pray for the progress of anti-racism in this nation and our increasing efforts to uplift and partner with communities that have been marginalized. We pray for the teachers who continue to wrestle with the obstacles of distanced learning and for administrators to continue to prioritize the health and safety of every staff member and student. We pray for every family, every loved one, of the 300,000 plus persons who have died in our nation this year, for every patient isolated from their loved ones, for every healthcare worker overburdened and fatigued by the overwhelming illness and death they encounter because of this pandemic. Call us again to do our part to ease the burden and grief of those who give themselves for our care. Especially, O oh God, we give thanks for the community of this congregation that has taught us the power of Christ our Emmanuel, for the loving support, for each prayer, for healing, for the encouragement in faith, for the foundation under our despair. We give thanks for your spirit that binds us and holds us close, even in our distance and discouragement. Strengthen us in witness to one another and to those who continue to seek loving community throughout this season and beyond. May we be agents of your mercy and kingdom transformation, bringing hope and healing by your spirit. For the gift of your light, for the grace of Christ, we pray all of these things in your holy name. And together now, as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it is true that we have been so incredibly blessed to know the presence of Christ among us that this story has been shared with us and we have been privy to uh, the characteristic of God made known to us through the person of Jesus Christ. As we give our offerings this morning, whether it be by writing a check or uh, going online to our website and donating now from the Donate Now button, uh, whether you are giving each and every week or each month through uh, automatic withdrawal, we trust that these offerings are truly transformed into the ministries of our church, to the ministries of God's work in the world. We thank you for these generous gifts and pray God will transform them.
on this glad new day for all the earth. We are grateful for giving hearts made joyful in the gift of your son. Bless these gifts we offer to the benefit of those in need. Bless our lives in service of sharing your love in the world. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And now as we go, in the name of the one who calls us beloved, in the name of God, the creator, Jesus, the son, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, may you feel this joy of Christmas for the days and the months and the years ahead. Amen. Amen.